All right, this is my uh, 11 millimeter Belgian pinfire revolver. And uh, this experiment is going to be turning 45 ACP brass into 11 millimeter pinfire cartridges. Uh, they do fit quite well, but uh, they need a little bit of work before they can be pinfire cartridges. Hard to do when you're holding it one hand. But they do fit nicely. And that will work quite well. So, on to the experiment. Step one of the conversion is taking the brass and removing the rim. So, bunch of ways you can just file it off if you want to but uh, since I have this I'll use this first step is index this off the taper of the cartridge into the redraw chuck snug it down make a cut Nice and trimmed. All I have to do now is all I have to do now is fill in the primer hole. And now I'm gonna trim up about 25 more of these. So stand by. I slugged the bore of my uh, pin fire here, and I need a bullet of 0 .440 diameter. I don't have a mole for that right now. Uh, I probably will make one, but I just haven't done it yet. So I did the next best thing. I took some 150 grain 38 slugs I casted earlier. And I made a swage. And swaged them down and made them hollow based. And 0 .440 diameter. Let me show you how to do that. This is my little swaging block. Reamed out to 0.440. A little taper there and a little taper there just to make things go in easier. Here's the the plug, the base plug. It fits right in here like that. Sets on there. And then I have my driving pin, which is conical. It's 440. And what we do is you just take a 38 round, drop it in there, put that in there, and give it a tap. All right, okay, so we're gonna take our 38 caliber bullet, 150 gram, put a little sizing lube on it, take my base plug, put it into the die, drop the bullet into the die, take our plunger, tap it in lightly, sits, now everything's seated. A couple of good wax. And then we tap it out. And there is your bullet. Swaged with a hollow base. And exactly 0 .440 in diameter. I think mold would be probably quicker, but uh, this will do for now. The next step will be filling in the flash hole with a little bit of solder. So, just heat it up gently. Just hot enough to get your solder to melt. This is uh, rosin core solder, so. Put it in there. Let that dry, or let that cool. And do another one. Warm it up. Water in there. Ta-da. Pretty simple. 
All right, they're all uh, the holes are all soldered up, and now we gotta get rid of the excess solder. Do that with either a, a file or doing a lathe. I'll try both methods, but uh, I'll probably end up using the lathe. Okay, I'm gonna uh, remove the solder off the back of this case. The file seems to work pretty good. A couple strokes with a file. Okay, while the uh, file does work, this tends to leave a much nicer finish. And I think it's a little easier. Bingo. Much prettier. I think we're gonna do the rest of them with this. But the file will work, if you have to. That's a lot better looking out. Brass is all cleaned up, polished, trimmed, and we're ready for priming them. What we're gonna have to do is drill a small hole in the back. This is just a test one. Small hole in the back, and piece of two millimeter brass rod that is just over half an inch long. So, gonna make a bunch of these and drill a bunch of holes and I'll get back to you soon. All right, two millimeter brass rod, got it all marked off, my distances and this nip. Nip, 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 pretty simple. You don't need uh, a degree to do this one. Do not rocket science. I'm making a bunch of these. And what we'll do now, if I get this all cut, is I'll flatten one end and round the other end off a little bit so it fits in nicely. So we finish cutting these and we'll go to the drill press and we'll round these bad boys off. Talk to you shortly. Hey, simple. These are the pins. We're gonna uh, round the both ends off. Actually, it's a little easier to round both ends off. Not real complicated. around definitely faster to do this and do it on a lathe because well one I don't have a collet I hold something that's small that's the main reason but that's it just gotta do a bunch more of these and then we'll put them all together all right we need to mark the cases now where I'm going to drill the holes for the pins. So I found the easiest way to do this is just I'd load the empty cases up into the revolver. Alright, I got six in there. Close my gate and take a automatic center punch. Push the case down, center punch it, rotate to the next one. Push the case back, make sure it's all the way back, center punch it. Rotate to the next one, push it down, center punch it. Pull all the way out, roll it down, push the case in, center punch it. Roll it down, let I need to adjust that a bit. Center punch it. And one more. 
it down, and center punch it. Okay, just pop them out, and it's, if you can see that, uh, it's center punch, trust me. You know where my camera is, uh, it's center punched. All right, I'm gonna drill them now. Well, once I get the rest of them marked. All right, this is a pretty simple spot. We're just gonna drill out the hole for the pin and mark. And put it on this set of uh, V blocks and put for hole in. Boom. Do another one for you. And for mark. And drill a hole. Boom. Line up the mark. And drill a hole. I think you get the uh, idea again. This is not that complicated of a part to do. Alright, come back with inserting a pin and primer later. Alright, alright, time to uh, put our pins into the cases and put our primers in. Well, percussion pins. So, what I do is this. What I like to do, I put this on my little block and I get the pin started. Just a little tap. Tap it in and I squeeze it all the way in. Alright, get it all the way in. Alright, good. Now, the pliers and I pull it back out just enough to get our percussion cap in. Now, safety first. Something's gonna go wrong. This is the time. And I like my face the way it is. I like my eyes the way they are. So line that up underneath the pin. Get it in there. There we go. Give it a little squeeze just to get it just so it's holding the primer in there. I don't know if you can see it or not. All right. And that's it. That one's done. And we keep doing that until we get them all done. Just like these. So we'll keep rolling. And uh, I'll be back when we put powder in. All right. We have our... Uh, Case is all ready. Uh, I put a little nail polish around the pinhole just to seal it up a bit. Our uh, percussion cap is in there. And now we're getting a little bit of Pyrodex using about 17 grains. Well, actually, I'm using 17 grains of Pyrodex here. So, here's my measure. Line that off. Seal. One up. Good. Let's fill another one. And we'll fill a third one for the video here. Three of those, 17 grains of Pyrodex. Tap, 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 just getting things settled. And I'll get a couple card wads here. Just uh, cut out a cardboard. One, two, and three. All right, tap those down in there, nice and flat. Everything's compressed load. Now, the bullets are just a press fit for now. Line it up, give it a little press. There we go. 
Let me do a light taper crimp on them. I'll show you how to do that in a bit. Add the last one here. That one. And then one more. In there. A little, a little squeeze. There we go. I'll show you how to do the taper crimp. And then they, these will be ready to fire. Alright. For uh, the slight crimp that I do, I have a taper cut into my uh, sizing die I use to make the bullets. I just set that over the case. Roll it out. Pull it out. Nice and thin. Oh, it needs just a touch more on that one. Yeah, nice and tight. Just snug it up. Do another one here. Down on there. Tap. Wiggle. Perfect. Tap. Wiggle. Perfect. There they are. That is my 11 millimeter pin fire round. Ready to be test fired. Um, that's it for this video. Um, I'll probably link a video or attach some test firing to the end of this. But that's the way I make my pin fire rounds. Uh, well, that's the way I'm going to make my pin fire rounds. Thank you.